Good morning. Welcome to Calvary, or maybe I should say welcome to myself, to Calvary United Methodist Church. I am so glad to be here and worship with all of you this morning. My name is Reverend Amanda Mosing, and I am your new pastor here. I appreciate the gracious welcome that you've extended to me and my family. Some of them are here today. My mom, my daughter, and my aunt, and my husband's in the back with our little one, Milo. Um, and after the worship service, there will be an opportunity for you to greet all of us in the fellowship hall. I would also like to mention that since we are new and we have um, our new address, there are new printed copies of the directory. You can find that in the narthex after worship. And I just want to thank you for your continued faithfulness and generosity in giving. There are many ways to give. The offering boxes are located in the back of the sanctuary. Um, you can also give your gifts via mail or online through PayPal. And I, I neglected to say welcome to those joining us on the live stream. I'm so glad uh, to be in worship with you that way this morning as well. Would you pray with me? God, we gather in your presence. Father, we long for more of you. Jesus, we put you at the center. Holy Spirit, come and fill our time together. Help us to be fully present here, to your word, to one another, and to the world you love. Amen. Would you please stand?
Right. So today, we're going to talk about why we gather for worship. Do you know what the word gather means? No? 
It means all different kinds of people from all different kinds of places coming together at the same place at the same time. That this is a gathering. We're gathered here at church. And why do you think we gather here? We gather here to worship. And our scripture tells us the story of the early church in its earliest days. A group of people who gathered together after Jesus died, was resurrected, and returned to heaven. And they kept sharing the story of Jesus and all the things that Jesus did. And a few of the important things that they did was they read scriptures, they ate together, they prayed together, and they just spent a lot of time together. It's fun to spend time with people, isn't it? Yeah. And so the early Christians set that example for us to follow today. We have that same opportunity to read the Bible, to fellowship, spend time with one another, to eat together, and to pray together. And you know what happened? Everybody felt welcome, and everybody felt like they had a part there. And that's what we're here to do also. And you don't need to be in this building to share the love and welcome of Jesus, do you? So God asks us to do that all the time, to share God's love everywhere and all the time with all people. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah? All right. So can you listen for the word gather when I preach today? Can you listen for the word gather? We're going to say that a lot. All right? Okay. Let's pray. And then you can go back. Face Mama again. Face Mama. There we go. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful that we have the opportunity to gather here today to worship you. Help us to keep our focus on you. And when we leave from this place today, help us to remember to share your love and your welcome to everyone we meet. Amen. teaching, and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Spirit, we ask that you would move among us, stir within us, opening our hearts and minds to the words you are speaking to us this day, and that we might have the grace to listen and respond. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. Today is the start of a new sermon series called Worship with Rejoicing. And you might find it odd that we are doing a whole sermon series about worship. We already know how to do that, right? Many of us have been attending church and participating in worship for our entire lives. It's second nature. It's just the thing we do every Sunday. And I think that can be true. And yet, we still need a reminder from time to time about why we're here. Why do we gather here for worship week in, week out? And throughout this series, we'll explore the different components of the worship service. Some you might be familiar with, and others might be new practices. There are different aspects of worship, and they are done intentionally and with purpose. It's easy for worship to become routine, and we don't think about why we do what we do. And today we start with the act of gathering for worship. Our scripture lesson shares a glimpse of the early church and what they considered important for the life of their fledgling community. It was a community that gathered together for worship. And our scripture passage today comes on the tales of the day of Pentecost experience. It was a glorious, powerful experience where the believers received the Holy Spirit. They were gathered together, and when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. And this caught the attention of other people gathered in Jerusalem. 
So when they heard the sound of all these voices and languages, a crowd started to gather among them. They were amazed to hear other people speaking in their language. How could it be that these Galileans could speak the native language of other people proclaiming the mighty works of God? Peter shared the message of Jesus Christ to the crowd who gathered. And not everyone accepted his message, but those who did were baptized. Acts 2.41 tells us that God brought about 3,000 people into the community that day. What an amazing day that was. What an experience that must have been. We see the importance of gathering together from the very start of the early church. What exactly did they gather together for? Scripture tells us they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. These were communal activities that they gathered together to do. And to this day, we gather together for these things. It was the foundation of the early church. I served as the youth director at Oxford United Methodist in Oxford, Ohio for three years. And I once attended a workshop that challenged us to articulate the bedrocks of our ministry and then to live it out accordingly. I took that, this verse to heart as the foundation of the youth ministry program. And every Sunday evening, we gathered together and shared a simple meal. I had a lot of pizza in those days. We played games and enjoyed one another's company. We studied scripture together and we prayed together. And we still experience many of these foundational components when we gather together today. So let's look at what they did and what it looks like for us today. When they gathered together, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. These would have been everything that Jesus had taught them, as well as the Hebrew scriptures and the explanation of Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah. And the apostles' teachings are still preserved in the New Testament today, largely in the form of epistles and letters. And we still dedicate ourselves to those teachings. We read scripture individually. Maybe you read a daily devotional or read through scripture one book at a time. I've grown partial to the YouVersion Bible app, and I follow daily reading plans. I really like those in my season of life. We also read scripture as a group, much like we did today already. And we also hear the proclamation of scripture through preaching. The early believers devoted themselves to fellowship, or koinonia. This Greek term offers a broader sense of sharing, community, participation. When we hear fellowship, we often think of a time of getting together for coffee and cookies, a, a church meal, a particular room or hall in a church building. And those are accurate understandings. But the understanding of fellowship went deeper than that for them. This classical Greek word was also used to describe things owned in common by the citizens of a city. For example, a public park was the property of all the citizens, and they all shared a part in it. It gives this sense of mutual concern. When Luke, the author of Acts, uses fellowship here, he's talking about fellowship as something Christians all partake and participate in. We have mutual concern and care for one another, both within the church community and without. The early church reminds us that we together are the church. We all play a part and everyone is needed. They also devoted themselves to worshiping God. And part of this worship included the breaking of bread or Holy Communion. They enjoyed communal meals but made Holy Communion the focal point of those meals. The Lord's Supper was celebrated as part of a much larger supper, a practice with roots in the practice of Passover. Every day they met together in the temple and they ate in their homes. And we see a close connection between worship and sharing meals. We practice Holy Communion, a holy meal that takes place within the context of worship. And it's a foretaste of the heavenly banquet that we will all enjoy when Christ returns in final victory. And Jesus Christ himself called himself the bread of life. In Christ, what seems like ordinary bread or an ordinary meal becomes sacred or extraordinary. And we remember that when we partake in Holy Communion, um, we remember that when we partake in Holy Communion, 
but even in the simple sharing of a meal after worship or a potluck during the week. We also do what we can to make sure that other people have enough food to eat, to share out of what we have. And just like the early believers, we share food with gladness. We sit down together and share a meal with glad hearts. We share and provide for others with glad hearts. The early church had this great sense of togetherness. And I think that's one of the most beautiful and important aspects of the church. They gathered together to pray, a source of power for them. The early believers knew that they could not meet life in their own strength, but they didn't need to. They always went to God before they went out into the world. They were able to meet the problems of life because they spent time in God's presence first. Have you ever gone through your day and something happens and you think, I didn't spend enough time with Jesus for this? <laughs> Just me? All right. We pray in the context of worship, before and after committee meetings, before meals, at Bible studies, during personal quiet time. There's always opportunity for prayer, and it can be an ongoing conversation with God throughout our day. We pray because we know God listens and responds to us. Whether God responds the way we want is another matter, but prayer gives us direction, wisdom, courage, hope, and peace. It keeps us connected to the one who created us, loves us, and sustains us. It's a way to share our love and concern for others. I know that I have stood strong many a time and made it through because people were praying for me. Prayer is, was crucial to the life and thriving of the early church, and it remains that way for us, too. In essence, the early church gathered together for the teaching and learning of Scripture, fellowship and being together in community, the sharing of meals and prayer and worship. These new Christians were transformed. They had new purpose in life. They devoted themselves to several activities that are still essential to the life of the church. Their devotion to these activities drove them to constant and persevering dedication. This devotion produced both the feelings and the action of commitment. They were committed to God and committed to one another. And amidst all the reasons for why they gathered and what they did, we cannot lose sight of who was gathering. If we remember back to the early part of Acts 2 and the Pentecost experience, we recall that a diverse group of people gathered together. The initial gathering when the Holy Spirit was poured out was not quite so diverse. However, it quickly caught the attention of others and a diverse crowd formed. We see all of the different nationalities listed in Acts 2, a section of scripture that many a person is hesitant to read out loud on Pentecost. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents in Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and other and the regions of Libya bordering, bordering Cyrene, visitors from Rome, Cretans, and Arabs. Talk about diversity. The early church was the gathering of a diverse group of people united in Jesus Christ. The body of Christ, the church, is a diverse group of people united in Christ. We are not the same, nor do we have to be. There's a place for everyone here. We learn and grow because of others. Their gathering was enriched by diversity, and so is ours. And I know that leads to differences and even division at times, but this passage tells us that the kingdom of God is a beautiful and diverse tapestry. It tells us that we must work to reflect that beauty of diversity in our congregations as well. Scripture tells us that there was a sense of awe and excitement in the early church community. God was performing many signs and wonders through the apostles, and we can rightly think of those as an extension of the, of the miracles that Jesus did. But in addition, we can understand it as a sense of wonder and excitement for the future. God was doing big things in and through and around them. Lives were being changed. How might we recover that sense of wonder and excitement? What can we dream and imagine as possible with God? And our passage closes with an interesting note. The Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This indicates to me that the early church had something that the other people wanted. 
There was something attractive and compelling about this gathering of people, so much so that their numbers increased daily. The reasons they gathered turned out to be the reasons why people wanted to be part of them. They gathered together for an authentic, life-giving community where needs were met, people were cared for, meals were shared, and Christ was the center. Christ was the focal point of everything they did and is what set them apart and is what sets us apart. We are a community of disciples called to make disciples for the transformation of the world. God is the reason we gather and the one we gather for. We are a gathering of people rooted in hope and in the love of Christ. And at the end of the day, gathering inherently includes the act of welcoming. People will not gather in a place where they don't feel welcome. And the early church did a marvelous job of paving the way so all would feel welcome. And I want to again express my gratitude for the warm welcome you've extended to me and my family. You've been so kind and so gracious, and we are thankful for all of you. I know that transitions are hard, particularly pastoral trans transitions. And I know they're accompanied by a lot of varying emotions, all of which are valid. And yet, you have extended the welcome and hospitality of Christ to me and my family. And for that, I say thank you. And as we gather for worship today, we welcome one another. We welcome those who are new to our community, and we explore the ways we can extend welcome to those who are not here yet. We are gathered for a purpose. We are gathered here because we've been transformed by God's love and grace. And we want to share that with others. We are gathered here with gratitude. We are gathered here to worship and to encounter the living and risen Christ. May this gathering equip us to go out and be the church, sharing the love and hope of Christ to all we encounter. Thanks be to God. Amen. Holy God, we have gathered this day to praise you. We are here because we want to be here. We sing our songs because we are glad to. We pray for your grace because we need to. We ask for the love of Christ to fill our hearts and overflow to loving you and our neighbors. We have gathered here to hear your word, to share in the joy of fellowship and being together, to pray. 
May this gathering be glorifying to you and edifying to all who are gathered here. May we leave from this place having encountered you, sent into the world to share your love, hope, and peace. As we gather today, we lift to you the prayers of our community. We pray for those in need of healing, those who are making difficult decisions, those experiencing hard times, those who feel alone, those in challenging situations. May your presence be tangible. And may they feel your love for them. In addition, we pray for gun violence victims all around the world. And then recently we lift up President Trump in the attempt on his life. We pray for those who lost their lives at that same rally. But God, we pray for a way of peace. We don't have to agree, but I hope we can agree that violence is not the answer. Lead us and guide us. Show us the ways we can come alongside each other to support and care for one another. And in this quiet moment, God, we lift to you the prayers we hold in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, that we ask that you would lift every shutter within our mind, open every door within our soul, that you, the Lord of glory, the God of countless hosts, may come in. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, the joy of loving hearts, who taught his disciples to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Won't you please stand?
forth in peace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.